video, we're going to look at an example of completing the square. In particular, we're going to complete the square for the function negative 4x squared plus 9x plus 1. And again, what that means is we're going to write it, rather than in the form ax squared plus bx plus c that it's currently in, into the new form a times x minus h all squared plus k. This example is a little bit harder because you'll end up having to deal with fractions when you're completing the square. It's assumed at this point that you've already looked at the PDF that describes the process for completing the square found in the lecture hall, and also some of the easier examples contained within that file. Also, if you'd like, if you look at the video example one, it takes you through an example where no fractions are involved, so that's a better place to begin. So it's assumed that you've looked at all of this before having a look at this video, and so hopefully you should be able to try this example on your own. So go ahead, try this out. Remember that the steps you're going to be taking are factoring out the coefficient of x squared, so negative four from the first two terms, then in your head taking the new coefficient of x dividing it by 2 and squaring it and adding and subtracting that within the brackets. Next, bringing the part that's being subtracted outside of the brackets and that's accomplished by multiplying by the coefficient of x squared that you had out front. And finally, just simplifying everything and realizing that the items in the brackets are a perfect square. That's tricky to just explain verbally. Again, you should have at this point looked at the process for completing the square and some simpler examples. So that was just supposed to be a quick refresher. So go ahead, try this out. Just hit pause and then play when you're ready to continue. So let's have a look at the solution. Let's begin by writing out our function. Next, we factor out the coefficient of x squared, which is negative 4, from the first two terms. And the plus 1 is going to be unaffected by all this. Now, for figuring out the coefficient of x, we had plus 9, and we factored out negative 4. So what we're going to end up with is negative 9 over 4x. If you're not certain that that's right, what you can do is just in your head multiply the coefficient of x, the negative 9 over 4, by the number out front, and see if you indeed get plus 9 as you expect. So if we multiply negative 4 by negative 9 over 4, the 4's will cancel, the two negative signs will make a plus, and we will end up with 9 as we expected. So we know that we've done this right. The next step is we have to take the coefficient of x, so negative 9 over 4, and in our head we have to divide it by 2, and then square it, and add and subtract it. So if we take negative 9 over 4 and divide it by 2, let's just do this on the side and we'll erase this in a moment. So we've got negative 9 over 4 and we're going to divide by 2. What that means, dividing by 2, is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So we've got negative 9 over 4 times 1 half, so we flipped and multiplied, and that's equal to negative 9 over 8. So now what we need to do is we need to square this, and if we take negative 9 over 8 and we square it, we're going to end up with 81 over 64. And notice that that's positive. So that's the number that we're going to add and subtract. So we're going to add 81 over 64, and we're going to subtract 81 over 64 inside the brackets. Let me go ahead and just erase this rough work on the side, just so it doesn't get confusing. But again, all that we did is we divided the coefficient of x by 2. So it was already divided by 4. Dividing it by 2 gave us negative 9 over 8. And so we squared that, got 81 over 64, and added and subtracted that. The next step is we want to bring the part that's being subtracted outside of the bracket but the problem is we have it multiplied by the 4 out front. So in other words, we've got the minus 81 over 64 multiplied by the negative 4 out front. If you multiply negative 81 over 64 by negative 4, you know you're going to end up with something positive. Now what we have is again negative 4 times negative 81 over 64. The negatives have cancelled to give us a plus and we have 4 times 81 over 64. If you think about how many times 4 goes into 64, it actually goes in 16 times, because 4 times 16 is 64. 
So now let's go ahead and just erase this. We know that what we're going to end up with is 81 over 16, and we still have the plus one. Our last step is to realize that the items in the brackets are now a perfect square, and what they're going to be is x minus nine over eight all squared. And the way we knew it was nine over eight is that was the number that we got when we took the coefficient of x and divided by two. And that's what you're always going to get. Now, the reason this works is because when you square everything, you're going to get two of the negative nine over eight terms multiplied by x's, so that'll give you the negative nine over four x. Finally, the items outside the brackets, if you take 81, and again, let's just do this in rough, 81 over 16 plus one is the same as 16 over 16. So finding common denominator, we have 81 plus 16 in the numerator, 1 plus 6 is 7, 8 plus 1 is 9, so we end up with, and let's just erase this, 97 over 16. So that's 97 over 16 is our final term. So again, just to recap, we follow the same steps that we always do for completing the square. We factor the coefficient of x squared out from the first two terms. We then took the coefficient of x, the negative 9 over 4, and what we did was we divided it by two and squared it, and that's what we added and subtracted. To move the term that was being subtracted outside of the brackets, because we don't need that for the perfect square, what we had to remember is that it was multiplied by the negative four out front, and that's how we ended up with 81 over 16 at the end being added to the one that we already had. Final step is just to simplify and realize that the items in the brackets are a perfect square. Now we're done, but remember that you can always check your work by expanding. So multiplying x minus 9 over 8 times x minus 9 over 8 times negative 4 and adding 97 over 16. It's a bit messy here because we've got the fractions, but either way, the point is, if you go ahead and expand, what you'll end up with is the function we had in the original question. So it's very easy to check your work when you complete the square because upon expanding your final answer, you should end up with what you started with originally.